first of all, thank you, Saibjit, for this lovely introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to all the panelists. Thank you. So, like, uh, the topic we are discussing today is artificial intelligence, the new frontier in communication innovation. And I think, like, AI is the talk of the town. Like, in our previous uh, discussion as well, AI is the topic of every discussion. And uh, like before uh, starting the panel, I want to give all you, uh, like all of you, a small brief of what we'll be discussing in the panel. And uh, like if we go a few years like ago before, so the like we all wanted some tools that can automate and streamline our tedious tasks. And uh, like AI is doing that, like that the future we were imagining back then is now finally happening. And it's like, like for me, AI is like that Doraemon's gadget <laughs> that we used to imagine ki that it will do all of our tasks like within seconds. So like from in today's time, AI is doing everything from creating content to analyzing information. It is doing everything and changing the communication industry in like many ways. So today we are discussing all the endless possibilities AI is creating in the communication industry and as well as the setbacks. So let's start. I'll start with you, Ms. Sunanda. Okay. <laughs> so first, my first question is like, I really want to know how the professionals are leveraging AI in the communication industry and how is it becoming a new frontier in the communications? Thank you so much, Ritika, and uh, a very, very heartiest uh, wishes to you all. And it's great and very heartening to see an all women's panel. I'm, I'm like yes, a big, yes, you know, uh, thanks to Exchange for Media. Um, coming to your question, uh, there are a lot of innovations and uh, we have been, in fact, I was listening to the panel yes. beforehand and it was already touching upon the topic of how AI is uh, enhancing or also challenging our professions, be it any professions. However, we are into the communication space and uh, uh, you know, there were panelists who talked about the fact that we are human beings and as long as we are communicating with each other, our profession is m more or less rather um, non uh, irreplaceable. Now, um, be beyond that, if we look at the various innovative spaces that are there, we are seeing a lot of um, bombardment of content vis-a-vis -vis also our client communications. Uh, even, in fact, all the industries that we represent the various sectors that we represent are also facing this challenge of, or let's say the opportunity of having AIs in their businesses. Yes. And we have, as communicators, it is also a big challenge for us to also learn about their technologies, imbibe the AI in our own professions, and also take that further and <laughs> actually gain brownie points on it, like, you know, when yes. it comes to visibility. So, Keeping all that, yes, it is a more challenging workspace to be in, but it is also a very privileged uh, space to be in because we are exposed to so much of innovation and so much of chatter and technology that's coming in. Um, I, I think we should make maximum use of it. We'll talk about the other, um, yes. you know, the tools that we can use in a little bit. Yes, yes. So, Ms. Kritika, would you like to add something to this? Yeah, I think... Um, See, as in the last panel also we discussed that it can use to empower, but we have to be cautious with the use and not make it overpower. Yes. So any sort of technology and, you know, like AI has become a conversation which is uh, very hyped right now, especially after we've had ChatGPT come into our lives. So, but if you see, if you go back in the day, starting from when chatbots came into existence, so we've... We've been having technical AI assistance all throughout. So it's like, what, in 2019 or 2012, in fact, when chatbots came in. So um, it's made so much of communication simpler. It's uh, made customer service simpler. So I feel like these are very important points, but it's challenging when it is overused or used without enough discretion. Um, because if you just give a prompt and you just cut, copy, paste, then in that case, um, ChatGPT is also like, I mean, it's a intelligence uh, robot or whatever. So, I mean, it might decipher correctly, it might misconstrue what we are trying to say. So, 
I mean, it needs to be done with a layer of yeah. cautious, ca caution and judicious yeah. discretion. GPU needs to be intelligent. <laughs> Ayushi, would you like to add something? So for everyone here, I'm Ayushi Arakulyani representing Media Corridor as a public relations agency. And I'm pretty grateful to be sharing the panel here with Likewise. such wonderful people. And uh, I'm not a fan of AI. <laughs> <laughs> Me as I well. I <laughs> completely dis detest. I'm coming from a journalism background. I have briefly worked as a journalist. And we did not have support of content. Yes. AI. So no, I'm not. I don't support anything and everything that's happening in the world of AI, but as an owner of an agency and when you're working with clients and you know, you have to introduce them to the media, to the journalists, and you have to say that an X business can leverage technology and change the game for a lot of e-commerce brands. What am I doing? Yeah. I'm supporting brands communicate effectively about the AI and the ML algorithms that they are using in business. So who do I become then? Yeah. I'm a communications bridge. Yes. I'm doing my job. So if this were a for and against motion, I'd say I'm pretty much against <laughs> the term AI. But uh, actually, we are going to discuss <laughs> everything for <laughs> and against both. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. so I'll say that. But yes, it's helping us immensely, all the AI tools that we go back to with all the content support, design support, presentation support, etc. But my only complaint to AI is, why didn't you come any sooner? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. Yes. It would make, uh, made our life easier back then. Like <laughs> okay, so moving forward, like Kritika, you mentioned that chatbots bo are like becoming increasingly important in every industry. So I would like you to state some disadvantages and disadvantages of chatbots. Just in the communication industry, yeah. I think like how we manage social media for a couple of brands as well. So chatbots play a very effective role because all your customer service is filtered. It's a around the clock presence of a human resource is not required. So I feel that's a very big plus. Like all the Instagram filters that you see, uh, whether it is a shake filter or it is some sort of bunny face that you have to make or any sort of polls and quizzes that you have to do. I mean, all of it is AI at the end of the day. So it's also used as a mechanism to check on engagement, to see what sort of increased reach is uh, something that we are garnering out of it. So these primarily are advantages of having chatbots, essentially. I just feel like the disadvantage is um, like from my personal experience of using the chatbot on Zomato, yes. it's sad. So, I mean, that's an understatement, but yeah. So, uh, I feel like, you know, th since AI cannot replace human things, so there is a particular format that you have to follow. Maybe you can at that point in time, maybe you cannot. But um, yeah, so if I take the example of Zomato chatbot, then more often than not, the request is not men met with the correct approach or with the correct solution. So I feel like that's a disadvantage because there's no human interface happening. Yeah. yeah. So like, can you share a real time example? Any one of you want to re share a real time example of how have you leveraged chatbots or any AI tool in your communication strategy? So we've done it, as I said, for social media brands, especially like for any sort of service related uh, social media page that we manage. It's very essential because you get too many requests. It's super difficult to filter those requests manually. You don't know what is spam, what is not spam. Yes, it does go in the request folder on Instagram. However, it's not very... Uh, plain. It's not very simple. So if you introduce chatbots where you have a layer of filtered questions, like layer of questions happening, so at the end of it, whoever's, whoever answers all the four questions is actually your target audience. So it gets simplified. It's a funnel approach that chatbots uh, also help with. So I feel this has been a big plus in our case. Yes. yes. Uh, Ayushi, would you like to add your experience? <laughs> With chatbots, I say whenever there is a digital marketing proposal that we put out to our own clients, yes. gone are the days when we used to say, you know, we'll give you a commendable social media strategy and we'll deliver eight reels in a month and two posts in a week, et cetera, et cetera. 
I think when we're acing our proposals also these days, if you would agree or disagree with me here, we actually are saying that the power of chatbots is going to actually make you analyze, make you read the data in such a way that you'd know whether the target audience you're trying to target can literally be put in your pocket or not. Because that chatbot is going to make you, like you said, of the four options you are giving to somebody to opt for, and the maximum answers you get, there's a why to it. You get down to reasoning. Yes. And then is where your campaign comes exactly. into place. Yeah, totally. So that's, I think, a platform, uh, chatbots specifically help us entrepreneurs take a very mindful approach when it comes to freezing on a particular campaign approach to take for our clients. Plus, see, we're in a day and age where we're assisting our clients to take mindful decisions on a particular business strategy they themselves want us to promote for them, whether it's business, uh, whether the business is product driven or service driven, etc. They seek our support in it. Bringing transparency on the table and saying we too are looking for further assistance from chatbots and other AI tools, etc., just makes the client and the target audience feel more positively about you and does not make you look as a traditional communications professional, etc. So I think chatbots are really working in our favor. They are. There's something Aishi's in favor of. <laughs> okay, so Sunanda, I would like to ask you, like, uh, other than the chatbots, what are the other AI tools that are uh, like uh, helping in transforming the communication industry? You know, um, of course, there are. Uh, the list can go on. It's endless. We don't even realize uh, how AI is affecting us, our work. Even if you're looking at your emails, which you thought they are manually handled or uh, making presentations. There, I mean, the list is long when it comes to your professional stuff. The other day I was baking bre bread, sourdough bread with the help of chat GPT because I wasn't finding the answers <laughs> on YouTube and actually it worked. Um, ag again, all said and done, yes, the chatbots, yes, they, there are other... Um, you know, in our professional uh, work, as far as uh, my agency is concerned, we are also looking at uh, cross-country geographical distances that we need to bridge. Uh, cultural uh, diversity and speaking to the different audiences, the different target groups. <clears throat> uh, people who are in a remote area, like let's say from, from a Delhi perspective or from an international perspective, let's say a Bhojpuri language, and they want to communicate. My representative is going there. Um, and, and earlier it used to be really tough. Now, of course, we have those language translation tools. Of course, if I know the language, I'll still have to filter it. I'll still have to read it. But yes, um, majorly, we are it's helping us in our business bring together a lot of different cultures, also to understand etiquette also to understand, otherwise we would have to take courses, let's say I'm working with a client in Germany, and I don't know German culture, I don't know tradition. That's a very important thing. I, I would now look into at least get some um, uh, ideas or some kind of tips on how to deal with it. Moreover, at the end of the day, even I support Ayushi, and I say, yes, I belong to that generation where we are still, and in fact, if we look at it that way, we are uh, really miles away from uh, what the younger generation people are uh, working with AI. But at the same time, as far as our profession, and especially the public relations sector is concerned, we are using these um, tools, I would still call them tools, in order to enhance our work rather than replace it. Just to kind of, you know, uh, I had, I had a, a talk with somebody who's heading an AI uh, division of one of the largest uh, software consultancies, uh, not just in India, but abroad. And he was saying, well, chat GPT is a thing of the past. We are looking at actually, uh, we are actually testing where new companies can be formed only with your AI. So you have a CEO like me of my agency and I'm an avatar, I create an avatar and actually they're conversing and the emotional uh, part of it, and they're going to have not just d uh, discussions like an HR and a taxation person or your consultant, and they're going to have discussions, and that is going to change into voice, and that's scary. But we just have to use it very, very judiciously. So like that you mentioned, but like communication is a very personal thing. Like it requires a personal connection. So do you think AI can facilitate that in future as well? in the industry? Yeah, of course, you know, look, 
what what do you really like when we go on the social media? Look at it from the consumer's perspective. Uh, a, a lively picture of, of some of the people where they're looking straight into the camera and that speaks to you. That's why you like a particular thing. You go and like a particular video or a certain piece of content. The same goes with your personal anecdotes in life when you're writing a blog or something where it is touching you as a human being. That cannot be replaced. So communication will always be, we are just going to probably have to be a little more mindful because we have that much of data to work with. So I probably restrict that area to in analyzing the data and helping me get to those 10 steps because uh, also in the previous panel, we have like 10 different platforms and we need to be experts in all the platforms in order to actually give the client a reasonable approach to doing things. And we need the, to have that kind of help from AI, and I think th they're really going in the right direction, provided we use it cautiously. Rightly said, Sananda. So with that moving forward, I would like to know that uh, other than the communication industry, can AI be used in other industries like healthcare and education to increase, like reduce the communication gap and enhance the communication strategies of those industries? How can we leverage it? I don't think um, AI is restrictive to any industry per se. However, I feel like what um, Sunanda said earlier was one not replacing the other, and that is where the approach of collaborative intelligence comes in. So AI is not an exclusive tool or a power that will function on its own. It's all us humans who are driving it at the end of the day. So if I have to divide it between the brain and the heart, so the soul of a campaign will come from the humans. But however, if you have to derive insights, if you have to generate patterns, if you have to look deeper into it, if you have to give it a hyper-local approach or create any such sort of strategy, which in terms of like, there was uh, Shantanu, I believe, on the uh, previous panel who uh, talked about leading re regional PR. Yeah. So in those cases, it's very, very important to do so. I feel like AI can only replace um, jobs or, uh, you know, any sort of uh, situations where the job is, where the work role is extremely repetitive so and methodological. So if it is not repetitive, it's not replaceable 100%. Because like, I mean, if you're mining data, then, I mean, you need a miner. You need a gold miner, right? So, I mean, that's what the role is of humans versus uh, AI. AI. So it's not restrictive to any industry. I mean, if you personalize it to healthcare, there are a lot of companies who are working on uh, such big uh, things. I think I was reading the other day that Google has come up with something which is into the healthcare space. I don't remember it appropriately. So I'll refrain to exa like expand on that. However, I feel like if Google is investing in a healthcare project related with AI, then it sure can be something that can be looked at. So basically, I want to know what impact it creates uh, on the industries. Like, how can we? We know the way, we know the ways how we can leverage it and the tools. But what's the overall impact? It's uh, like it's an open question, so you all can like anyone. Okay, See, please, if I can start with that, the role of AI is to streamline a lot of our tasks, and it's automating it to an extent that it's making work of us uh, humans. A little streamlined, I'll start with that, and easier. But you cannot overpower human uh, emotional intelligence here. You cannot overpower the human creativity here. And you can absolutely not take in the strategic approach we'll have towards the business. I talk both as an agency or the client or just people at large. Going back to the earlier asked questions where you had asked, you know, is it for the healthcare or is yeah. which industry? See, for some, I'm going to talk predictive analytics here, okay? So people who are in the business of pricing intelligence, people who are in the business of location intelligence, what are they doing? They are reading huge stacks of data to present to the audience the possibility of Google Maps. Predictive analytics, for example, in the pricing intelligence sector, what are they doing? Reading great amounts of data again 
And what are they trying to do? Whenever you're shopping, your Mintra, your Flipkart, etc., etc., which item to buy on which app at what price? They're just making you take that decision faster. Have you ever experienced your shopping of a pro your shopping for a particular product on your RGO, and suddenly you get a message that it's gone, the price has gone uh, yeah. lower on Tata Click, and suddenly you get an update like it's gone even lower on Flipkart. But then you go, listen, I have some points stacked in Amazon. Can I go back there and check how much it is priced at? The price doesn't change. Who do you think is doing all this? A human behind it? No, it's the machine learning algorithm that's been trained by us humans to perform in a certain way when you're being prompted in a certain way. These are all machines that are working. We're all making use of machines to ease our task. Depending on which sector it is for, whether healthcare, auto industry, for all you know, uh, e-commerce industry, our own communications industry, just make use of it in a specific time frame and don't give your heart and soul and depend on it. That's all yes. that I'd say. Imagine getting articles rejected by the media. They're saying, tell us the source. Can you say it's chat GPT? You wouldn't dare say it. Yeah. So we can use chat GPT to a certain extent to, uh, again, automate our own operations, streamline our own tasks, perhaps, but not wholly, solely depend on them. That's all. I, I just want to probably add to um, our colleagues here. See, the thing is also, as it, since you asked about particular sectors, health services, and also travel um, has civil aviation, you know, you see the prices are very dynamic. That's obviously all AI is doing. But also, uh, you know, we, ha we are, as we are dealing with different, let's say, factories and manufacturing of uh, various products, we talk about a very famous and uh, this thing term called Internet 4.0 which is about machines communicating with each other. And when you're t talking about connectivity and communications, these machines are now having to be c uh, calibrated in order to whatever, and that is, I think, really a huge possibility of AI. Talk about agriculture. When we're talk about, uh, talking about precipitation, and when you're talking about how um, certain, it, there are AI tools that are also measuring data and communicating that data with another landscape, which is similar to the geographical and climatic lines, uh, landscape here in India, let's say perhaps in Syria or Yemen, we have mangoes being produced there because of the kind of exchange of data that is happening. So, this is something we can't close our eyes to, that is going to happen, and we have no way other than that. But this whole aspect of communications in every single aspect of our lives, we just have to be <laughs> more open and welcome towards it, but yes, not overbear us. Yeah. So with that, I'll move forward to the last question of this panel. Like, uh, in the industry, there's a lot of talk about that AI is uh, going to make the human efforts obsolete, but uh, I don't think anyone can agree to that statement here. So how can humans and AI collaborate effectively to create effect like uh, efficient communication strategies? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, in fact, you have summed it up very well in your question. You know, it, it, it's a no brainer. The end, I mean, if I am a decision maker, that decision maker cannot be AI. Um, and and I'm, if I'm a facilitator, a facilitator cannot be AI. So these roles are very well distinguished and uh, differentiated between every workspace of our lives, right? In our, especially in putting strategies together. I mean, it'll be stupid of me to have 10 people working on a presentation just to make it look good, yeah. right? But what is inside those slides? I have to, because, you know, I always say one thing, you can take away everything, you can't take my brains, right? So that human aspect, that will, when you go for your pitch presentations, when we go for our meetings and our updates, um, there has to be, you can't send a chatbot, right? You can't just say, okay, this is done, and uh, you can do it, you can send monitoring reports, you should take help of those kind of tools that are there, and like, you know, we have many, many uh, tools that are available to us from uh, in the AI space, use them. Uh, make most of them, but at the end, you are the owner of the content. And that is something we always need to bear in mind. Ritika, would you like to add something? Also, I feel that um, adding to what Sunanda said is, 
it's not making any role obsolete. It's rather evolutionary in the sense that if at all one role becomes redundant, there are multiple roles that open up. Um, if, for instance, like data analysts' job is now questionable, then there are multiple other op job openings that might, or criteria that might have opened up. So it's not going to replace or make human existence or human role obsolete in any sense. It's just that it might change from one way of working to another way of working, and which is something I feel like the sooner we adapt to it, the better, and of course with a layer of caution, as I said earlier. Oh. Ayushi, your thoughts? So, it's AI revolution, but it's also AI breakthrough. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yes? And to brace up for this AI breakthrough in a very positive sentiment, dear yes. AI, I do like you. <laughs> my, my worry is why not any sooner? We That's made her enough. like AI. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just not a fan of AI, but yeah. deep respect for it. Oh. That's what I'd say. But coming back to your question, the AI, AI breakthrough and just breaking it down, if it's human intelligence at one side of the table, it's prompting the AI to support on the other side of the tables. So if humans and AI can work hand in hand, we just have to brace up for an AI breakthrough that's coming forward for all of us in the communications industry. Yes, yes, very, very true. <laughs> so that's the end of our session. And I would like to thank all of you for your lovely insights and perspective on the topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.